Yeah. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> On behalf of Anne and I, my what wife and I. <laughs> We're off on the right road. <laughs> My wife and I. It's been a tremendous pleasure to have our friends, friends that are priceless, here today with us. And make no mistake about it, you can't put a price on good friends. And that's why you're all here today. It was some, as Philip said, 21 years ago that we met. And we got on like a house on fire from day one. I had the good fortune to have Anne's father in our life for quite four or five years, was it? And one evening we were in the garden there pruning an apple tree. And I had a long chat with him, outlining my intentions for the future. And I happened to say to him, I said, what Anne has got here, you have helped. And you have provided for her. And I've got no interest whatsoever. And what I have got over at Bedwas is for my side, and Anne's got no interest in that. And I said, if we can earn a pound between us, we're going to enjoy ourselves. And we have done that. And the thought of marriage, we've talked about marriage for years and years. But we happened to have a lovely wedding with young Philip here in November. And I think that was, that was a fabulous day. And that was the catalyst for it, you know. We've got to get married. Why do we've got all these friends around us? You know, we've got a funny time of life, a lot of us, mine, you know. <laughs> Year today and gone tomorrow. So there's no time like the present. So, but to get back to Anne's father, I'd had this chat with him. I think it was in a November time. And I was at a rugby match in Cardiff with work. Father's ill. Come on home. I'm three sheets to the wind. Another phone call. Father's ill. Come on home. <coughs> Next phone call. Too late. Father's not with us. But I'm eternally grateful I had that chat with him some couple of months prior. He knew our intentions and he knew his daughter was safe with me. And I tell you what, I, I don't know, was it intuition, instinct or what? But I'm eternally grateful I had those few words with him. Anyway, Anne and I have progressed ever since. We've, the children have grown up. They've got wives now, so I've got daughter-in-laws, I've got son-in-laws, I've got um, I'm extremely fortunate, extremely fortunate. And thank you very much, each and every one of you, for being here today. Is that one thing wrong? Oh, yeah. The younger and daughter-in-law. The younger and son-in-law. Pardon? The younger and son-in-law. Yes. <laughs> well, unless you want to declare it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I've got daughter-in-laws, I've got son-in-laws, and I've got a beautiful bride by the side I'm of me today. And can we <laughs> <laughs> after much prompting. And can we please raise our glasses to the bride and all our very dear friends. To the bride. To the bride. To the friend. Wait a minute. And <laughs> Bill, some this is what it's like, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's better not to write things down sometimes. We should have written them <laughs> In front of each and every one, you've got a place name in front of you. And as you all know, I'm a dab hand with a pen. In case you think I wrote all those out, I never did. Because our dear friend over there, Dr. Heather Mountjoy, with a specialised art in calligraphy, that did each and every invitation and place cards for it. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, I think that's enough from me. <laughs> oh, yes, but, you know, that doesn't apply to the, to the wider audience. There is one thing I must add. I thought she was never the same since that <laughs> <laughs> Oh, died, I think. <laughs>